Hello and welcome to worship. This service will take the form of the Methodist Covenant service, albeit not quite as we expected to have it. This traditional service held once a year is given to us by John Wesley himself, who felt it important that the people called Methodist should renew their covenant with their covenant relationship with God on a regular basis. The service has now reached beyond the Methodist Church and Christian people far and wide are appreciating this opportunity for renewal. Whilst the covenant usually takes place within a service of Holy Communion, as yet the Methodist Church does not permit this to be done virtually. So let us, in a moment of silence, gather our thoughts and prepare our hearts for worship. The psalmist says, How good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. We sing the hymn, The Lord of Heaven Confess. Let us pray. Glory to the Father, the God of love, who created us, who continually preserves and sustains us, who has loved us with an everlasting love and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God for ever. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who, though he was rich, yet for our sake became poor, and was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin, who proclaimed the good news of the kingdom, and was obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, who was raised from the dead and is alive for ever, and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him, 
who is seated at God's right hand in glory, and will come to be our judge. Blessed be God for ever. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we are born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ, whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do for us more than we can ask or think. Blessed be God for ever. To the one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory for ever. Amen. God of grace, through the mediation of your Son, you call us into a new covenant. Help us, therefore, to draw near with faith and join ourselves in a perpetual covenant with you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture readings today are from, first of all, from the book of the prophet Jeremiah reading from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them. This is the covenant that I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbour or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And from the New Testament, we read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 22 to 25. While they were eating, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Amen, and may God bless to us these readings from his word. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of each of our hearts be acceptable to you, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. New Year, a time for new beginnings, for making resolutions and determined efforts to maybe change our ways, try something new and begin the year with purpose. I wonder if it was different for you at the beginning of this year compared to previous New Years. Most likely it was. New Year's Day saw us slip fairly quietly into 2021 without much change. We remain in lockdown, unable to hold this service as we had planned to do in the church building. It was as if we had taken a couple of steps forward, only to have to then retreat and step back once again. However, here we are. And there is much for us to be thankful for, even though we are fed up with the restrictions. We need to remind ourselves that we are children of God. 
the God who brought the world into being, who created humankind in his own image, and whose love for us was clearly seen in the man dying on a cross, and then his victorious resurrection from the, de the death. Jesus left the glory and perfection of heaven to come to this sin-ridden world to live among us, and through all he suffered, bring us the opportunity of life in all its fullness. Therefore, it is right and fitting that we gather where we are today to share in our covenant service, where we willingly offer ourselves to the God who held nothing back from us. It is a challenging service, and the promises we make lay much upon us. We heard from the prophet Jeremiah God's promise to his people Israel that he would be their God and they would be his people. This offer of the new covenant is extended beyond Israel to all people in Jesus Christ, who provides for us the supreme example of what it is to live within such a covenant relationship with God. Now, we maybe tend to think of a covenant as some kind of legal contract, but that's not what we have with God. This is far removed from a signature on a piece of paper. This covenant is all about relationship. The relationship of love into which God invites us and which he alone has made possible for us. We have done nothing to achieve or deserve all this on our own. We never could. This covenant of love is God's gracious gift to us. And we need first of all to accept it and then work out how we are to live within it and sustain that loving relationship. This makes the words of the covenant, while full of God's grace, also a challenge. If God is so committed to us that he offers us his love unconditionally, are we ready and willing to offer ourselves in return to him? If today we are willing, then we need to ask ourselves how we can hope to live it out as we journey on into 2021. As a church congregation, we are a community of God's people. And when we meet together, we strengthen, support and help one another. We build each other up, as the Apostle Paul says. But we are not meeting together right now. So how do we face the challenges of our covenant promise? Well, just because we're not able to be together in church does not mean we don't think of one another, chat on the phone or meet on Zoom. It doesn't mean that we can't hold one another in prayer before God. And thus we continue to gain strength and encouragement from each other for our faith journey. We look forward to the day when we can be together to share in bread and wine, as Jesus sat round the table with his disciples, as we read in Mark's Gospel. That moment for them was deep with symbolism, as Jesus picked up a piece of bread, broke it and shared it out with words whose meaning would become clear to his friends following the resurrection and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They would understand then that Jesus had shared with them symbols of his soon to be broken body and shed blood, bringing in a new relationship, a new covenant with God through him. They and all of humankind were to have a share in all that Jesus would achieve through his sacrifice. 
I'm sure those disciples left that table changed people. Life and faith would never be the same again. They were soon to be bearers of the gospel of love to all people. But how were they to do this any more than we can hope to keep the promises we'll make today? They were devoted followers of Jesus, yes, but they remained mortal beings, prone to sin, filled with weaknesses, faults and failings, just like us. Judas would betray Jesus, Peter would deny even knowing him, and the rest, when the time came, would flee in fear for their lives. But we can be thankful that we are in the presence of the God who knows us, and despite all our weaknesses, holds us firmly in his loving relationship. The covenant prayer is not an easy one. We are called not just to believe, but to behave. Behave as a disciple of Jesus, putting him first in all things and accepting his will for us, even when it's contradictory to what we may either want or feel is right for us. And that's not easy. And we cannot hope to fulfill such a life without help. And so we must be diligent about remaining close to Jesus. Jesus speaks about the necessity for this closeness in John's gospel when he refers to himself as the vine and his followers as the branches. A branch on its own can do nothing. It is useless and eventually it withers and dies. There is no nourishment, no nurture. But if it remains attached to the vine, then it will draw all it needs to enable it to grow and bear fruit and accomplish all that it was meant to do. We need that nourishment daily. If we are to remain strong in faith and discipleship. We begin today with our covenant prayer. Trusting in the power of the love of God to live it out day by day. Amen. We now come to the covenant part of our service and I invite you to join in with the words that are printed in bolder type. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to his steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord, in his life, work, death and resurrection. In him all people may be set free from sin and its power, and united in love and obedience. In this covenant God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet therefore as generations have met before us to renew the covenant which bound them and binds us to God. Let us then seek forgiveness for the sin by which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy. Hear us as we confess our sins, for the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him, and afraid to bear the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating witness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, 
evade our responsibilities and fail to be good stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. We say together, have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love. In the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offences. Wash away all my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We sing now our covenant hymn, Come, let us use the grace divine. Thank you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purpose for us and the call to love and serve God in all our life and work. 
Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. We say together, I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure, when there is work for me and when there is none, when I am troubled and when I am at peace. Your will be done when I am valued and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing. I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you as and when you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. As we have entered this covenant not for ourselves alone, but as God's servants and witnesses, let us pray for the church and the world. Loving God, hear us as we pray for your universal church. Make us all one, that the world may believe. Inspire and lead all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Establish justice and peace among all people. Have compassion on all who suffer from any sickness, grief or trouble. Deliver them from their distress. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray in silence for our own needs and for those of others. Lord our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers. And you have promised through Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs. In this world grant that we may truly know you, and in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing the hymn, O Thou Who Camest From Above. 
Peace of the Lord be always with you, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.